Good afternoon, my name is Charles Scott from Civil Designer Software. Thank you very much for allowing the time to join us today. I trust everyone is safe and well. Welcome to this month's Open Classroom webinar, our 65th, which forms part of the Open Classroom webinar series. This series in turn forms part of our suite of technical support services and resources created to proficiently assist our existing Civil Designer Software user community and additionally quickly upskill our new software clients. Please visit our website's services section for our full list of services unique to Civil Designer. And in the webinar section, find our list of past Open Classroom webinars facilitated by Andrew Cole, Cameron Boyle, and Christopher Smith since the beginning of April last year. Please also visit our FAQ page, which now hosts 330 short searchable videos created from our past webinars. Videos covering our BIM data files workflow interoperability, dealing with GIS data, how to best utilize our help desk services, and last month's quantities webinar, which we created eight FAQ videos from. Finally, please visit our client showcase section for more information on where your industry partners are taking Civil Designer to. Back to today's webinar, where we welcome back Andrew Cole, who many of you will know from our support center and the many training courses he has facilitated over the years. During Andrew's time today, please do not hesitate to send us any questions you may have using the text question messenger service in the GoToWebinar app. Please also remember, we'll be posting a recording of today's meeting in our website's webinar section later this afternoon. So, good afternoon again, Andrew, and Please take it away. Thanks, Charles, and welcome everyone to this month's Survey and Terrain webinar. In today's webinar, I'm going to be looking at designing of parking areas, and we'll look at a couple of different ways of doing this inside Civil Designer. But before I move on to the designing of the parking areas, I just want to touch on few ways to optimize your project's design space. So essentially that would be trimming down your DTM. So for example, with this project, if I switch on the triangulation, just zoom out a bit, you can see this grid survey is quite large uh, compared to the actual cadastral area in the middle there. And in fact, there is actually even a, a slightly larger portion of the strip survey sitting a little bit higher up. So we're going to trim down that survey so we can just focus in on the area where we are designing. And there is in fact also some CAD data sitting quite far away from our design area as well. And the way that I've picked that up is with a zoom all and you can see at the bottom that's the actual cadastral we're working with and there's some CAD sitting right on top of the screen over there. could try and select it um, just graphically but a surefire way of selecting it is just to select the actual cadastral that I'm working with. So just select and then using the edit functions I'm going to invert my selection. So the invert selection just deselects what's currently selected and selects any other CAD entities. You can see in the properties bar, 1,135 CAD entities selected. And then if I do a zoom selected, so I'm just using the right click, but you can also use the Z and S shortcut keys. We're going to be zooming into that other CAD that's sitting quite far away. So that, that is sitting quite far out. I could delete that at this stage, but I'll come back and just show you the, the normal snip to get rid of that, that CAD. So this isn't CAD that we need for this current design. Maybe just another trick um, would be to put some geometry in there, so just back in the CAD. A geometry cross for example just to help you identify exactly where anything is so if zoom all again so you can see that's my site down here and that other cat is sitting sort of di directly above it 
Okay, so this is the area we're going to focus in on. And what I'm going to show you how to do is remove that other part of the survey um, that isn't needed currently, and then also remove the CAD. Okay, so back to my terrain module. And then just zooming out a bit. Okay, so let's get on with the snipping out. The function we're going to use there is this model polygon clip function to make it a bit more rectangular. I'm going to go to the drawing functionality quickly, my drawing toolbar. I'm just going to draw in a, a rectangle here that we can snap to. Okay, and then I'm going to go to that model and polygon clip. Pick up all those corner areas of my rectangle and right click finish. Okay, so the clipping you can clip everything inside. You've got the filter options here, and in this case, I want to clip out everything outside the area that I'm working in. Okay, so those are all the points that I've selected. And yes, I can. Okay, so there we got a nicely defined area. Can delete the rectangle. So that's great. So if I had to now rescale my survey, you can see over here tools rescale survey. We previously um, this is looking at a very large area. It's now focusing on this sort of two kilometer area. Okay, so the, the rescale survey, we're still finding that CAD that we found higher up is still influencing the, the zoom area. So to get rid of the CAD, I'm just going to go zoom in. What I need to do now is then clip out the, the CAD entities. So to snip out the CAD entities, I'm just going back to my CAD application. And I'm using the modify snip function. Okay, so just a box, and I'm snipping everything on the outside. So you uncheck the inside option, and we don't need the snip region drawn, the CAD region drawn. So I can accept that. First corner, let's change back to my freehand snap. So always remember to check which is your current snap that's active. First corner and then second corner. You might just have to make sure that you have all the, the layers visible. Okay, so that's pretty much tidied everything up. And now if we go back to our terrain module and to the tools rescale survey, we should now be able to just focus in on this design area of ours. So that's my redraw based on my paper size. You can see there's my paper limits if I switch off the lines and then zoom all focuses in on that area. Okay, then moving on to our main topic, the parking area design. I'm going to open up a project to work with. Okay, so this is my layout for my parking area. I'm just going to start off with the traditional way of designing it, inserting the points, the DTM points, and um, grading from point to point, and then verifying your drainage um, with the contours, and then your slope shading arrows as well. Okay, so just to start with, I've got these two tie-in points. That's just my um, tie-in point to existing road levels. So I'm going to be adding points and break lines or feature lines so that I can view those contours and, and slope shading arrows as I progress through my design. So I'm going to be using the graphical uh, grade point from another function, and I'm adding new points. So add new 
couple of options and settings here. You've got a grade or a percentage slope that you can specify. Uh, there's a radial and a chained option as far as inserting uh, the actual points. Uh, radial would be the same reference point that your new points get calculated from. And then the chained option would be your reference point becomes the, the, the last point that you inserted. You can then optionally add or not add the break lines and feature lines. So I want to add some feature lines. That percentage, I'm going to use 2% uh, slope. So just a, a starting drainage slope across my whole parking area in this case. But obviously you can change your grades as required for your particular design. Okay, so my starting reference point would be this um, entrance way over here. And then it'll prompt me then for my new position. So I'm just going to put some on these edge points over here. And this is a positive 2% grade. Let me just give this a name. I'm going to increment those. And I'm using this surface two. Okay. You don't necessarily have to view the the information for that join. So you could switch that off. I'll just keep it on for a few more points. Okay, I'm gonna do one on the midpoint of that arc. Still at that climbing two percent grade. You can set the, the number of decimals as well for your point heights. Okay, so then just moving on to this point over here, just using my J jump. Okay. And then I want this to climb, so it's still at positive 2 grade. And so I think let me switch off the join information and then I'm going to come across here and do run on this corner okay all right and then over here my grade is actually changing so that's going to be a negative two percent so negative two percent from there coming back down to this corner over here that's correct, and then I want to carry on with a positive 2% grade, so just make sure that's correct. I'm just using the J jump, but I could use a snap as well. Okay, so let me maybe pick up the point snap. Okay. Okay, and then just a negative grade to there as well. Negative two. Okay, and then just back to a positive grade. So you would decide based on your design what grades you'd you'd like to use. Okay, so I'm just gonna run around adding those grades. Okay. So those are all positive increasing levels and then from here I want to now go with a negative 2. Okay, I'm just going to stop at that point. Okay, to be able to view the contours for the parking area surface as well as the slope shading arrows, we're gonna to have to have a closed triangulated surface. So what I need to do, I'm just gonna add, so just using that grade, I'm gonna add a few more points and then add a few additional break lines or feature lines so we can see the contours. So I'm just gonna add new point again and I'm using that negative 2% grade and chained option. So this time I'm gonna be working from this side across to here. So I'm just going to put in one over there. OK, 
Okay, so that's a negative grade. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I just want to start from a new reference point. So I'm just going to escape spacebar just to repeat the function. It's going to prompt me for my reference point. So I'm going to start up here on this side. Yeah, happy with that. And then I'm just going to run it again down this side. So this is going to be my reference point, starting point. Just going to do a couple perpendicular to those lines. Okay, then maybe let's just have a look at the actual lines that we've got. So we need additional lines possibly for the contours and slope shading to show. So you need to have a enclosed surface. So I'm just going to add terrain lines, adding a feature line from here to there. Cross. Maybe from there to there to there. So you can just view the contours and the slope shading and then add where you do need additional lines. So I'm just going to go to display settings now, activate the contours. So it's on this surface 2, my parking surface at a 50 mil interval. And I'm activating the contours and then the slope shading as well for surface 2. Not displaying the slope shading colors, but the slope arrows. So you can set a pen and the length of the arrows. Okay, so that drainage looks acceptable. If you wanted to verify, remember you can always annotate um, your slope so I could do annotate slope with the percentage do something like that to get an equivalent grade across there okay so I'm happy with that for now and then we'll try that with the terrain strings Okay, before I start with the terrain strings, I'm just going to remove the slope annotation of here. Just select and delete. And I'm just going to switch on the CAD. Okay. Alright, so I just need to create the string. We can maybe just switch the contours off. And the slope shading and display settings. Okay. Just want to keep those two elevations on just as a reference initially. Okay, so we're going to be creating a string pretty much on that same path um, that I've used all around the perimeter of the parking area. So I'm going to go to strings, the strings menu, string creation. A couple of different ways of creating your string. In this case, I'm just going to use string from entities. The other option would have been to create a polyline out of those um, lines and arcs making up the perimeter and then just selecting it with a polyline. But in this case, I'm going to be using the string from entities. So I just have to select the string path one element at a time. So these are the CAD entities that make up my string perimeter or define the path that I'm going to be using. Just have to do it in sequence. And 
last one right click finish okay and then I'm just going to use that fixed height initially the 8.68 my starting elevation from that tie in point okay okay so that's my string defined all around the perimeter I'm just going to have to edit that vertex, that tie in vertex. So this is vertex editing and then edit vertex. The vertices are each bend point in your terrain string. Okay, so I'm going to make that 8.57. Okay, so that's that vertex, my tie in vertex. Okay, so let me switch off the point heights for now and the triangles. Could switch that surface off. Okay, you'll notice if you can see the, the actual vertices of the string. This isn't a closed string, so ideally to be able to view the contours, you need to close that off so I'm just going to go into the properties while it's selected the terrain string and close it off so just check the close change that to yes and then you can see that closed off you can do that with the polyline as well okay so we also need to view the elevations so I'm just going to go to my display settings to the string settings my string one and just switch on the elevations over here. Can also do that in the properties. Okay. So at the moment I've just assigned that single elevation 8.68. So to grade this string I'm going to use the strings functionality range editing. So you're editing a range of vertices. The vertices are every bend point along your terrain string so I'm going to be using the vertical grade option so with the range editing you can work with vertical taper and then vertical grade I'll do the taper later so for now vertical grade I'll just have to select the string I start vertex so this is all going to be at two percent running all the way up to the, that point Okay, because it's a closed string, you get the ambiguous range message. So just make sure it's the correct range you're working with. And I'm putting in a 2% positive climbing grade in 50 ratio slope. Ask for confirmation of the levels. So yes. You can see how those levels then automatically update. Then over here I have to introduce a negative grade and you need at least three vertices to use the range edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to strings, vertex editing and I'm inserting a vertex. You can also do a multiple insert on the range editing but in this case I only need one vertex. So it's the vertex editing insert vertex. Okay, so once again, just select the string family and then indicate near the start of the range. So this vertex just in front of it. It's going to take place on that next edge, which is highlighted over there. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. And then I just want to use my gravel snap just to make sure I'm snapping onto the, the string there. And quit. Actually, I need another one over here. So I'm just going to do another spacebar repeat function to insert a vertex start of the range. So you can see it's highlighted this edge. And then, yes, I want to continue. Put a midpoint in there. 
so now I can carry on with the grading. So I'm going to use negative grade from there to there. So it's the strings range editing vertical grade again from that point to that point. That's a negative 2%. Okay. Just using my space bar for the vertical grading. I'm going to go from there on to that point. So still the positive 2% grade. You can see it indicates your end elevation. Okay. And then across here, I want that to be a negative. So it's that strings, range, editing, still vertical grade from that point to that point. Negative 2%. Okay. And then I'm just using space bar again. To go from that point, so we want a climbing grade all the way around to the 2% and a cap. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just switch on the string contour so we can see what's happening as far as the drainage slopes go. So I'm going to go to display settings to strings. And I'm going to be switching on the contours. Let's just check that interval 0 0.05. And we can also switch on those slope arrows. So this would be specifically based on the string design. Okay, so you can see from the contours, I still need to create this edge of my string, terrain string. So I'm going to use that strings, still a range of vertices. And instead of the vertical grade, specifying a grade, I'm going to use a vertical taper. You just specify start and end elevation or start and end vertex. And then it just does a grade from the one point to the other, just a straight line. Okay, so... Let's just select our start vertex and then we go all the way down to our tie in level over there. Okay, and yes, okay, so you can see those contours and slope arrows. So the drainage looks pretty much the same as our previous example. Okay, well, let's have a look at the plotting of a table setting our table for our parking area. So I'm going to go to plot generate and then just use the normal plan sheet file in the knowledge base software folder. That's your standard plan sheet file. And I'm creating a layout. Just going to add a new plot region. Don't have to rotate that. So right click quit. And then I'm just, as far as the listing going, I'm using that standard strings list. Okay, so there it is. I didn't name that string, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the design. And I'm going to rename my string. So under strings, string editing, I want to rename the parent string. I'm just going to call that P1. And then you can see that the names in the plot table are updated. And then I just wanted to show you for the island over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a different string, a second string, to model the island. Okay, so for the island of here, I'm using string creation, string from entities once again. 
just selecting the CAD entities making up the string path one at a time in the correct sequence. Right click finish. Okay, and then this string I'm going to call P2. Okay, and then I'm interpolating and I'm using the strings model for interpolation. So it'll actually read in the levels from the existing string surface. Okay, so if I go to display settings, string 2, I can switch on the elevations there. Let's try a different color. And then if we go back to our plan plot, you'll see those points have been added to the table. If you want to view the actual point names, currently you'd have to translate your string to a DTM surface and then view those point names. So that would be your strings, string editing, and translate to DTM surface. So select the string, select the destination surface, make it surface for. Okay, and then I could switch off the elevations under the strings over here. So switch off our island elevations. And we can just switch on the, the names over there. And just switch off surface 2 for now. Okay. So that would be your point names. If I go back to the plan view, you can just tweak the text size. Um, that would be initially done with your terrain draft text over here. So you can set a different text size or you can make use of the, the draft text functionality. Okay, so that was just a look at some of the functionality available in Civil Designer for parking area design. We can look at um, the additional functionality that is available in future webinars. But for now, just to finish off today, I'd like to show you a road. So this would be in the roads module, a parking area just at a different grade to the, the road cross full grade. So I just thought I'd model that. I had a client that was working on something like that recently. So let's have a look at that. Just opening up the project. Okay, so quite an interesting design of here. So we're going to go into the roads mode for this particular exercise. I need to select a road file to work with. adding a new road. I'm just going to call it parking for now. Okay, the, the, the interesting thing in the way that I'm going to model this with a different grade is I'm going to have the alignment on the one edge of the road and then I'm going to do my widening with the cross full grade over here. So initially just with the setup here, you can see I've set it already. I'm going to have the left lane six meters wide initially, but my right lane is, is zero. And then when I model the widening, then I'll use that 2% grade for the parking area. Okay, so basically I'm going to put in the line on here. I'm going to use regression to pick up the road edges. And then when I do this, it'll pick up the cross full grade. Okay, so I'm just going to pop in my alignment. So alignment horizontal, graphically inserting my PIs. And I've got a start point here. I've already catted in a circle over there. 
my start point and then my NPI. So that's just on the right edge of that that road edge. Right click finish. Okay. And I'm just gonna run the road expert so I won't tweak the, the vertical alignment as yet. Just to show you that so my alignment is basically positioned there and I've only got the left hand width showing so zero right hand width. Okay, and then to do the widening I'm gonna use the standard regression. So let's just switch on that transparent shading. Okay. So selecting the road that I want to work with and I'm using alignment regression extracting strings. So I'm going to use the left edge and the right edge. So extract strings, left edge string and a right edge. Let's just do the left edge for now. Okay, I'm retaining the cross wall. That string, that's a polyline for that widening on the left, so I can extract that string and it recalculates the road based on that polyline of mine. My road expert is activated, so it will automatically recalculate when I make any changes. Let's have a look at the cross sections just to show you. So just paging down the road you can see the standard six meter width and then there's that widening at the same grade so just a two percent cross forward. Okay so I'm going to run the widening on the right and when it's going to use that two percent grade as specified in the control panel so just looking at the road control panel again you can see I've got the 2%, so 2% from the alignment and then 2% to the right of the alignment. Okay, so let's run that quickly. So it's back to alignment regression, extract strings, and I've already got the left edge, so now just my right edge string. And I'm using the edge control data, that 2%. Okay, so in this case, I've just drawn in a shorter segment for that parking area. So this is to model the parking area. You can see that's been extracted. Okay, maybe let's just have a look at that cross section again. So if I page down the road, you can see there's that widening now at a different grade. So we've got a standard crossfall grade and then the 2% from the edge levels for that parking area. Could maybe just verify that with your contours. If I switch on the road display contours, display settings, 50 millimeters. So you can see there's my road crossfall and then that parking at a different grade. Switch that off again. Okay, then I just want to add the junction just to complete the design of here. So my intersecting road, my main road. Okay, and then what I'm doing over here, I'm going to model it um, from CAD entity. So the bell mouth, the left curve is actually from CAD entities. And then the right curve as well, CAD entities. And then I'm just going to switch on the paving in the display settings. I'm going to the display settings, going to have some textures for my road. Um, for the carriageway, I'm using brick paving. You've got that whole list of 
textures that you can use. And that would just display in the, the render view. Okay, so just having a look at the roads and the parking in the CAD render view. So just to activate the textures, I have to right click and go to my render settings and enable the textures over here. Quite a lot of developers going into the textures for Soul Designer 8.5. So we're looking forward to that coming soon. Okay, and then I have a predefined saved view over there. I'm just switching the, the sunlight on. But yeah, that's basically my parking at a different grade to the, the main road. And that's all I've got time for today. Um, have a good day further. Until next time, cheers. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Andrew. That was great. And thank you very much to all of you who attended today's webinar. Please remember, if you would like any further information or assistance with regards to the contents of Andrew's presentation today, or you would like to request future webinar topics, please use the email address listed on your screen right now. Once again, thank you very much for your time today. Have a great afternoon, weekend, and goodbye for now.